Potato Queens is supported by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash queen. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait, y'all. That's blueapron.com slash queen. Tito Queens is supported by Casper, an award-winning manufacturer of one premium mattress, combining high-density memory foams that contour to your body. Try risk-free for 100 nights and save $50 by visiting casper.com slash queen and enter the promo code queen. Listener supported. WNYC Studios. What was your first TV crush? Hmm. Even if it was later in life, because I don't know if you grew up watching TV. No, I, I'm not fucking Amish. <laughs> Go lick my nuts that I don't have. <laughs> That's fair. Your first lover party, you were 18 years old. <laughs> what if it was Bob Ross? Just kidding. That's funny. No, That's cute. No, it was not Bob Ross. <laughs> it was Bob Ross. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. I know who my TV, my first TV crush is. <laughs> it was uh, Mark Paul Gossler and... Who? Time out. Sorry, she just gave me a look, everybody. You guys, I uh, said Mark hyphen Paul Gosler, and she just went, who? Time in. Who Save, is that? Zach Morris from Save by oh, the yeah, Bell. Oh, yeah, I didn't really watch Save by the and Bell. And A.C. Slater. Isn't the theme song, isn't it like, mm-hmm. Save by the Bell. Mm-hmm. Hi, Mark Paul Gosler. Hi, Mark Paul Gosler. How young are you? Were you born last week? Oh, my God. They were in season four in 1993. I was four years old. What the (laughs) fuck I look like watching a show about a dude named Screech? (laughs) What do I look like? I went back and watched older stuff. Like, I've seen fucking Perry Mason. Oh, I watched Perry Mason. I had a grandma. Okay. Well, didn't you have... My grandma wasn't fucking watching a show (laughs) about some kid named Screech. On Saved by the Bell, like she had some Wait, sort of respect. She wanted a have... procedural. Objection, Your Honor. Incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. You know who's what? Elizabeth Be- Jesse Spano? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> is it Spano? Jesse Spano Spano? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, you can't sing tonight. You can't. I'm so excited. Is that her? I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Bonjour, monsieurs and madames et gender non-conforming individuals. Ooh, croissant. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi, dear listeners? So that's like all the French I know, and I took literally seven years of French. And croissant is all I know. Anyway, I'm Jessica Williams, and I'm joined by my oh-so-lovely co-host. Can you guess who her name is? It's nope. me, Michelle Obama. No, that's so funny. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jessica Williams, and I'm joined by my oh-so-lovely, oh-so-sweet co-host. Can you guess who it is? It's me, Sasha and Malia Obama. <laughs> yep, it's two people, Sasha and Malia Obama. <laughs> <laughs> no, J.K. Simmons, it's me, Phoebe Robinson. And we're here with a hot new show for you guys. We've got John Hodgman. You Aww. got all these like homies from The Daily Show chopping in. I love it. It's I'm so cool. cute. John's so <laughs> cool. He like is such a sweet guy with like his facial hair and his glasses. And his like musical talent. And you know? we put him on the spot about Sex and the City, and he fucking He dragged stepped- us low-key. He did. He should have. That was tight. But it was, like, cool that he had so many opinions about it, because yeah. I was not expecting that. Yeah, it was really dope. It was really cool. Plus, we've got Sonya Denny and John Roberts. You guys are really going to love this episode, so just buckle up, grab a Pop-Tart, and... Ooh, right? What's the flavor? I love... Brown sugar cinnamon. I or was strawberries. gonna say brown sugar. It's good. Oh it's the best gosh. one. That's like literally dessert. Yeah. So get that all nice and warm. A little where you go. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. When you take it out. Ooh, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. When you break that pea tart apart <laughs> and you hit that smell, when that smell hits your nose. <laughs> oh, eyes watering. Curl up. Anyway, enjoy the show. Welcome to Tudo Queen.
What have you been up to? Uh, well, I just joined Equinox Gym. Congrats. Um, Which is crazy. I've been, uh, yeah. I've, Very fancy. Yeah, y'all, hey, y'all know we gotta, you know, we gotta try and goop it up. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so what do you think about it so far? Pros. They give you eucalyptus towels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that after a nice little, like, spin bike to just have that in my life. Put they that have on my that face. little refrigerator, right? Yeah, real fridge, like put it underneath your armpits. Oh. It's great. A con of Equinox is that there are too many stairs to get into the gym. Yeah. <laughs> it's really disrespectful. It's like literally 10 flights. Right. I'm like out of shape of for stairs. the gym. It's super disrespectful. And it's like I'm trying to get in shape and you're making me want to just fuck it all and not yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another pro is like literally every guy there is attractive. You're like, I oh. don't like that. That's horrific to me. Why? Um, did I tell you one time that I like had a sexy trainer and it was like really upsetting? Yeah. I had a sexy trainer just to like jog everybody's memory and (laughs) no braggies. Yeah, no braggies. I mean, he was like one of the hottest dudes ever. Um, and when I laid down for the final stretching at the end, that's so hot. It was like, I put my leg up and he just put, you know, his knee down on my leg that was down and then just started to push me back and so I felt the heat between our genitals (laughs) (laughs) and so I was very alarmed that I was suddenly aware of his genitals yeah and you know we're both in sweats so there wasn't as much of a barrier as I would have liked right so I got the fuck out of there and then never went back but what so you're okay with a hot dude at the gym? Yeah, like if I'm on the treadmill, uh-huh. usually I'm like watching like old episodes of like Sex in the City on E. That rules. And then, you know, if I want to take a break, I just look at like a hot piece just walking to like a, a you know, dumbbell rack. And I'm like, cool, good for you. That's nice. Get after it, bro. That's tight. On my yeah. way here, I heard a black woman talking to seven police officers on the street. I had like my Uber window rolled down and she was like, yeah, that's when she pushed me on the floor and started punching me in the face. And they were like, okay, where, what do you mean? She's like, she started just punching me in the face and saying I was a bitch. And then she started kicking me in the face. And I kid you not, one of the seven police officers was like, so it was just in the face then? <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, cool, boop. And they took my UberX here the rest of the way. I want to know what happened. Ah, dude, it was so juicy. Why were there seven cops there? There did not need to be seven. Oh, my God. They needed to, like, go grab whoever, like, punched this lady in the face. But I just love that they clarified, like, so it was only the face. (laughs) Not relevant. I I just love, I love other people's drama. Like, I have a very drama-free life. Oh, shit. I took a flight. I stayed with my parents. Yeah. And I was flying to back here. I was flying back home last week, right? And I just got an apartment out in LA. I'm by Coastal now. And I wanted no to take and I wanted to take <laughs> um I have sex toys. And I wanted to have like a sex toy on every port. So I have one here, one at my boyfriend's house, and I wanted one for my new apartment. And so I stopped by my parents' house because it's really close to LAX, took my uh vibrator out. And just started packing up my stuff. It's time for me to go to the airport. I always miss flights. And uh, I get in my Uber and I go straight to the airport. And as we're getting off of LAX, I realize that I left my vibrator sitting out at my parents' house. (laughs) That's literally what I did. (laughs) I was Fran Drescher in the nanny. (laughs) Ah! Massa Sheffield. <laughs> and so I was like, holy shit. Um, trying to calculate how much time I have. I have maybe an hour to boarding. So I tell the driver, I'm like, hey, oh man, I'm sorry. Do you think that we can turn around and go back to my house? I left something really important there. <laughs> and little, little does you know, it's like my fucking vibrator um, and, from Babeland. And <laughs> so then we're like rushing back. I'm like stuck in traffic on the way oh. home. 
I run into the house. I grab this fucking vibrator that's like laying right on my mom's desk that she like <laughs> pins things on Pinterest on. And it's just like, that were was... you looking for me? <laughs> and so I grab it. I run back to the Uber. I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Finally get back to the airport. Yeah. And I have TSA pre-check. And I get there and they're like, Yo, there's no pre-check today. You know, they always do it when it's you like, need it why? the most. I need it today. Yeah. I need it today. Yeah. The flight's boarding in like 10 minutes. And so luckily it's the first gate 20 feet away. Nice. And so I throw my stuff in. My fucking vibrator's in my backpack. <laughs> I put it on the TSA like uh, conveyor belt. Yeah. And it's going through. They stop on mine, look at it for a little bit. And then they're like, Nah, and they continue but then somebody grabs my bag my purse and they're like Ugh. excuse me ma'am do you have change in here and I was like yes <laughs> it's my fucking purse yeah so they're like sorry we're gonna have to run it through and they page me the uh. gate pages me I'm like oh, okay so they take my purse they put it in the conveyor belt it's right in the middle and the fucking TSA machine freezes. No. And the guy's like, mm, sorry, looks like luck's not on your side. And I'm like, fuck, it's all because I like to fucking rub it out everywhere I go. <laughs> Curse my delicious and voracious sexuality. And so I'm like, excuse me, can you just grab it? They're yeah. waiting for me. And the guy's like, ugh, I guess. So while he does that, I run to my gate and I'm like, hey, I'm here. I had an issue. I left something at home. The TSA right now is being a little bit trash. No disrespect. I'm going to go back and grab my bags, but I promise I'll be right back. And the man is so zen. And he's like, okay, all right. Don't worry, you have five minutes. And I was like, great. So finally the guy grabs it. It's in this long fucking line. He puts it on the other um, conveyor belt and it goes through... And the woman grabs it and she says, excuse me, I'm sorry, ma'am, do you have change in here? What? And I was like, what? What are you, what do you mean? There's no liquids in here. Are you fucking kidding me? Let me just take my vibrator and get on my fucking flight. And so she's like, I'm sorry, we're going to have to run it through again. So then they ran it through again. Oh my God. And then they were like, finally, the gate agent walks up and he's just waiting for me, like, fucking knowing in his eyes, like he knew I left my vibrator. <laughs> He's like, ah. <laughs> and so then finally I like take my bag and I just like rush and I make it on the flight and they close all the doors wow. behind me. But the plane took off like 10 minutes late because I forgot That's my That's like, like the ending vibrator. of love actually, but not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like love actually, you're trash. <laughs> but it's like if I'd, a, if I'd have missed my flight because of my vibrator, I would have like never masturbated again. <laughs> Also, like, if you didn't remember it and then your mom discovered it and, like, of course, Maria would not say anything. You just come home for Christmas for, like, dinner and it would just be very tense and you would have no idea why. And then I finally get home one night and it's just sitting gently yep. on my pillow. Yeah. She's like... <laughs> like, you know what you did. Yeah, yeah. She's like, well, I didn't tell your father, but yeah. you know, just know. <laughs> Like yeah, a you, secret between us that will hold forever until she passes. <laughs> yeah, you can't recover from a parent discovering your vibrator. Like no, you can't. That's horrific. You can't go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's oh my gosh, yeah. it's horrible. That's why digital baby. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> I might have to go back to manual. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it AM radio, baby. AM radio. AM. I'm trying to operate Sirius XMU. I'm trying to stream it. <laughs> On my Beats headphones that are Bluetooth. Oh. Damn. I'm never going to do that again, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, should we get this show started? Yeah, I'm having so much fun. You guys are so, so great tonight. Uh, our first act that we're bringing up, she has a web series called Brown Girls. It's cool as fuck. We need to support brown women doing dope shit. Uh, please get up for Sonia Jenny! Hey, you guys. Give it up for Phoebe and Jessica. Jessica. 
so happy to be here. Um, I, I, uh, so I, I used to live in D.C. And then at one point, yeah, someone from D.C. What part? <laughs> She's like, whoops, <laughs> the suburbs. I'm rich. Okay, girl, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you don't want to self-identify because we'd have to fucking kill you. No, I'm kidding. 99%? All right. Um, that was a detour. But I, I, I used to live in D.C. like almost six years ago, and then I moved to Chicago. Uh, I won't identify you. <laughs> We're also going to kill you. Um, but no, I moved to Chicago, and I felt like when I was in D.C., I was like a social drinker. And then when I moved to Chicago, like I developed a drinking problem. And I know that was true because I became the type of person that wakes up to Facebook notifications that I was tagged in pictures I don't remember taking with people I don't remember meeting. You know, it's like, who is Lydia living my life like it's going up in this bitch? Henderson, who are you? are you? And why is there an entire Facebook album, 50 pictures, just you and I tag title, me and my new bitch? Like, <laughs> what is happening, you know? But I, 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 but about in August, I moved to New York, uh, which I love. And um, I, when I first moved to New York, I was having a conversation in Chicago uh, with one of my friend's girlfriends. And she was like, oh, like, where, what part of New York are you moving to? Because, like, I'm from New York. And I was like, oh, Best Eye Brooklyn. And she was like, <sighs> I guess that makes you a gentrifier. And I was like, what? <laughs> she was like, yeah, my grandmother was priced out by people like you. And I was like, girl, I can't be a gentrifier. I'm black. <laughs> yes, yes, my boyfriend is white, but he's a dog walker. He's not even using his privilege. You understand? It's wasted on him. Because I feel like if we are gentrifiers, we're like level one or two. Do you know what I mean? Like, like a scotch of gentrification. Like, <laughs> And I miss Boosh for any Top Chef fans. Come on, DC, Rich. You got cable. Stop playing. Um, I am, um, I, I haven't, my mom's never seen me stand up because I won't invite her. But that's, let's not get hung up in details. Um, but when I was home last year, she was like, let me see a video. I want to see a video of your stand up. And like all the comedians you're going to see tonight are fantastic. Jessica and Phoebe are obviously amazing. But like no matter how funny you are, you're going to have a set where you bomb. But I don't think you can say you've truly bombed until you sat with the person who gave you life. <laughs> and two minutes in, she's like, <laughs> do you do this a lot? It's like, oh my God. It's like I finally understand uh, the saying, a piece of me died. Because <laughs> a piece of me is still my mom's couch trying to explain to her how brilliant my hotel Rwanda shitless lisp it is. She's not on board. Some of you didn't laugh at that. You're like, I work at a nonprofit. That's not very funny. I'm a good person. <laughs> no, but I am, um, my mom is Rwandan, as I mentioned, and like, I'm high for Rwandan, my dad's Haitian, but like, when my, mo my mom moved here in her 20s, so that means like, in her lifetime, she's been through a lot. Like, there was a genocide in 94, there was one before that. She moved here when she was pregnant, and like, just all these racism and xenophobia, all these things that she's experienced, but she's so strong. If you met my mom, you'd never know she'd been through that. But then she raised me in the West, <laughs> and weekly I'll call her, and I'm like, Mom, I woke up sad this morning and I don't know why. <laughs> she's super supportive because she's like such a good mom and a great Catholic. She's always like, oh no, <laughs> have you prayed? <laughs> and I'm always like, I'm agnostic, so maybe. You know? <laughs> she fucking hates that joke so much. <laughs> but God loves it. Does he? Is he exist? I don't know. Um, but no, I did go see a psychiatrist recently and for people like who are happy, um, when you go to see one of these people, like, they ask you a series of questions. Like, one of the first questions they asked me, he was like, um, are you in a relationship? And I was like, yeah. He was like, boyfriend? I was like, yeah. He was like, do you love him? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> what did he say? I don't say it first. <laughs> he didn't laugh. Uh, <laughs> he was like, I think that's inappropriate. And I was like, but doctor, the world is a stage, you know? <laughs> <sighs> Uh, another question he asked me was like, do you do drugs? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're a cop, you have to tell me. Inappropriate, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, and then another question he asked me, he was like, um, have you ever had suicidal thoughts? And I was like, uh-huh. And he was like, why do you think you haven't acted on those thoughts? And I was like, obviously, it would be hard on my family, my friends, my boyfriend, like <sighs> having to pay New York rent by himself in this economy, you know? 
Ah, <laughs> and some love or some shit like that. And also, I follow that up with like, no matter how sad I get, I still feel like suicide is something that's hard to go through with. And this man looks at me, then looks at his notepad, and he goes, <laughs> "Not if you're determined." <laughs> I'm not making that up. That is a thousand percent what he said to me. And now I want to kill myself so fucking bad. Just so I can write a suicide note like, thanks, Dr. Keating. You taught me to believe in my... <coughs> it's because I'm going to hang my... You get it. You're on board. Okay. I'm going to dedicate it to you now. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. So last year, one of my friends was like, dude, listen, you should go to my therapist, Okay. Because he is amazing. He's, he's insightful. He's affordable. He's, he's, he's smart. He's affordable. He's so deep. He's affordable. And I was like, okay. And I went and I saw him and I was like, this will not do. Uh, he had on skinny jeans, <laughs> a denim vest, <laughs> on top of a denim shirt, <laughs> a beard and a buns. Like, nah. <laughs> like, I'm into that, but, like, not in my healthcare professionals. <laughs> like, I can't. Like, are we going to go to Coachella together? Like, what the fuck? Like, I can't. I feel like I can't tell you my suicide plan if you know who Childish Gambino is. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that, you know? Get the fuck out of here. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Give it up for Sonia Dennis! Two Dope Queens is supported by Blue Apron. Come and knock at our door. We've been waiting for Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country that is impacting communities and households everywhere. Plus, you know where your food is actually coming from because Blue Apes has partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranches across the United States. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash queen. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash queen. Two Dope Queens is supported by Movement Watches, the company started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them, so they started their own company. Style shouldn't break the bank, and starting at $95, Movement gives you classic designs, quality construction, and style. With over 1 million watches sold to customers in 160 countries around the world, Movement has solidified itself as the world's fastest-growing watch company. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com queen. Join the movement today. Hey, Two Dope Queens listeners, it's me, Ms. J. Willie, here to tell you that we have some really fantastic listeners that have donated to our show, like Melanie in Seattle, Carmen in Brooklyn, and Andrew in North Carolina. These guys, gals, and gender nonconforming individuals are putting their money where their mouth is when it comes to their love of 2DQ. And now I'm asking you, dear listener, to do the same. Do you like love our show? Do you love that we showcase performers that you might not hear anywhere else? Then help us keep doing what we're doing. Go to tutoqueens.org and click on donate to become a member today. You can find the link in the show notes for this episode. And here's something exciting. If we can get 250 people to sign up to give just $5 a month by June 30th, the Tao Foundation is going to kick in an extra $25,000 to help us keep doing what we're doing. Y'all, that is a whole lot of moolah. So help us out. Go to twodopequeens.org and click on donate or just text the word queens to 69866 and you can donate in two minutes on your phone. Again, that's queens at 69866. Thanks, y'all. I'm pretty excited about our, our next guest. He's a... Uh He's a friend of ours. I love him. He's so brilliant and wonderful and sweet. And uh, he's like all over TV. He wrote an essay in my book. He was a, a, a former co worker of Jessica. Uh, you know him from The Daily Show. Please get up for John Hodgman! Hello. 
Hello. Hi, what's Hi. up? What a pleasure it is to be here with I you guys. I know. I haven't yeah. seen you in months. We've only been corresponding via email. That's because true. Because you have a vacation home in Maine. Oh, it's true. Somebody likes Maine. So you stay there for months at a time. It's what true. is it I'm... like to have a vacation home? That's my dream. I am an elderly Caucasian man. <laughs> <laughs> Tight, tight, can confirm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was never my intention to have a vacation home in Maine. <laughs> but. It just happens. My wife has family in Maine, and she loves Maine, the state, more than any other place or human on earth. <laughs> and an opportunity came up to buy a home there. And I said, sure, because it would make her very happy, and she's extremely happy. But now we go to Maine, and I immediately feel, oh, I'm dying. Like, this is the, <laughs> this is the end for me. What, what was, do you do there? Do you, like, whittle? Do you take out your uh, banjo and yeah. <laughs> rock back and forth on the front porch? Do you it's, make boats to put inside, like, glasses? Like, what do you do? Do you blast sand? No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm looking, I'm looking to get a vacation home. And so I'm wondering yes. if we went to actually where you were, let's say sure. we got a place that we could go to. Will we yeah. be the we'll... only black people there? Yes. Great. How you know I was teeing that up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, it was a very strange... I, I spent the summer in Maine, and, of course, a lot of stuff happened this summer. Uh, the shootings out in Sterling and Castile and, and then the backlash to that... It was a horrible place to, exp I, mean, I mean, you know, I was living in a place where all of that news could mean nothing. Mm. Like, wow. all I had to do was turn it off mm. and just go back to whatever was happening. Because it is such a profoundly Caucasian and homogenous place. Wow. It, you know, I really felt bad because, you know, I, I have friends who are not white men. And I would love to have them come up to Maine, but occasionally I think, like, well, it would be weird. It, like, you might not be comfortable. Yeah. Like, when I see a person of color... I remember in Bar Harbor, Maine, I saw, like, a 55-year-old black couple, clearly affluent, and they were sitting at the uh, ice cream shop just enjoying some ice cream and just, like, watching the white people walk around. I'm like... <laughs> Dude, that's us. Guys, that is us. That's so us. You guys... <laughs> I tip my straw boater to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Wait, what kind of vacation house? Do yeah, you what want? do you want? Where do you want to go? Yeah, I want something um, woodsy kind of. I want to like mm -hmm. get a tiny house. Sure. And I want to have it for a little bit. I want to get like a nice property uh -huh. and then just put a tiny house on it. Yeah. Because I want a barn too. You're not a woodsy person. This isn't you. <laughs> it's gonna be like luxury woodsy. Like I don't want bugs or anything, so I'm gonna try and. Put Lux some Woods. bug bombs out there, like tiki mm -hmm. torches, and like just a bunch, like six acres of tiki torches. That's ignorant. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm standing in my truth. My yeah. ancestors <laughs> fought for me to do some bullshit like that. So. <laughs> I don't know. I want something where I can feel like there's a community, and mm -hmm. it feels sort of like the town in Jaws, where it's like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Without like all the shark murder. Funny thing about the town in Jaws. <laughs> They'd rather have people killed than acknowledge a shark. <laughs> they did a really bad job. Yeah. They did such a bad job of managing that situation. That's right. Feel like. yeah. I want that without any of the shark stuff. Yeah. I think I want a vacation home, too. Where do you want it? Where well, I was doing, I was, went to a rabbit hole on Wikipedia, so I started like looking at Charlie Rose's biography. Sick. I don't know how I got there, but I, w I felt like home when I was there. And you were like me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but he has he has a home in Paris. So I would li like to just be uh, his neighbor. Yeah. That's tight. I want to be Charlie Rose's neighbor, and like we would just like and we would hang out. Sure. What are you? What I'm just. You don't think what I are you guys gonna do together? My. My. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, in your head, like, what... Okay, well, I watch his show a lot. He loves funny people, yeah, right? Yeah, So yeah. I'm charming and funny, so he'd be like, oh, my God, we should be friends. And I'm like, I know. Um, and so then we get croissant, and then we would, like... <laughs> you will literally get kicked out of Paris via customs if you no. say that. <laughs> okay, so you get croissant. Okay, and then we'll, like... 
just like traipsed around like in like Paris, like how Carrie did in season six, <laughs> minus her sour puss face. She was like, "Man, that Paris. dude." Yeah, well, I liked I liked him. I did. I liked the I Russian. wasn't here for no. it. Have you ever seen Sex and the City, John? Yeah. Do you watch Sex and the City, John? I saw the TV shows. I did not see the movie. Oh, oh so yeah. yeah. You've seen all seasons. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you... Oh, are you remember? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, that's okay, dope. Okay. Here we go. Oh, my God. Roll okay. up your sleeves. Okay, are you... Te- I'm 45 years old. Come on. <laughs> are you team Aiden or are you team Big? Oh. Aiden. I met Aiden once. <gasps> oh, my God. Ooh, that's hot. Is he tall? Oh, my God. Is he tall? He's average height. No. no! No! You hate to see that happen. You hate when they turn out to be five foot uh, nine. Wait, but you're so, great. no, no, no. He's got to be. I met him. He's got to be five ten at least, or is it just yeah, because SJP five, is so tiny that he looked massive in comparison? Yeah, he's Damn it. he's okay. my height. I'm five ten. No, there is what? <laughs> <laughs> he's not. Okay. But you need to answer a question. Are you team Aiden or team Big? Oh, in the, in the series? In the yeah. series, yes. No press. <laughs> Don't do it. And you got to tell us why. Yeah. <laughs> if you come with some Team Steve bullshit, I'm going to cut you. I'm going to fuck you up. I don't want to hear Yo, that. Yeah, Steve is just always trying his hardest. I guess, like, don't. I guess I just felt that Carrie and, Carrie and Big had more of a connection. Jo- mm. Okay. Now I don't know Why? how it turned out Why? in the movie. What do no. you mean? Are you kidding me? What do you mean? Are you kidding me? What do you mean? <laughs> he would not introduce her to his mother. Uh huh. He left her at the altar like a million right. times. Yeah. He was gonna go to France with no fucking plan for their relationship. Sure. But he gave her that ugly bird purse. Rebuttal, sir. Yeah, please. I, this is I liked so her. Inner. I liked her a lot, but she was kind of a human monster. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, she true. was trash. She was true. trash. She didn't of, deserve Aiden. Aiden, to me, mm-hmm. Aiden was her flirtation with the idea of what if I were a real human being. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And it was it was clear that it was never ever going to <laughs> right. happen. There was so I'm not saying that Big is a good dude. Okay. Obviously he isn't. Right. I just felt that they were more that, that they would end up together. And mm. I don't spoiler alert, please don't tell me what happened. <laughs> and those two dumb movies that I didn't see. Those movies are were so, so bad. horrific. They're, They're so you, bad. Do you include them in the Sex and the City canon or no? Uh, Kind of, because there's a scene Are they the like the Star one. Wars prequels for you? Yeah. Like, just ignore Kinda, them? Yeah. yeah. Kind of, yeah. But it's like, there's like one funny scene, and it's like literally four minutes of the first Sex and the City movie where Charlotte literally just has to take a shit. And that's yeah. a that good was four minutes. And I was like, this is, this is canon. Yeah. So I decided. <laughs> But okay, I'm I'm fine with your answer. That was yeah, the best answer I've you heard. You gave us some shit to chew Look, over. All I can do is give you my honest answers based okay. on my own uh, uh, watching of the thing. I yeah, like. Tight. Did you watch it on your own volition, or did your wife get you into it? No, my wife got me into it, but it nice. was great. Yeah, That's I mean, it was cute. a great show. It's, yeah. it holds up. It announced that New York was a very different place. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, like. Uh, coming to New York in the 80s and then, and then moving here in the early 90s and seeing New York at that time and then seeing it transformed by wealth over the course of the 90s, Sex and the City really was like, yep, this is the way it is now. Like, mm-hmm. this is a, a springtime for Hitler of the wealthy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's like, like... People having a great time going to fancy bars and drinking fancy drinks yeah when i was a kid i when i and i would catch episodes i'd be like oh that's what womanhood looks like oh that's what it means to be an adult Mm -hmm. and then i moved to new york five years ago and i was like oh no they were crazy (laughs) you moved to new york five years ago i did for the daily show but how's that possible i've known you forever 
Aww, you guys. Dude, shut up. Thank you. <laughs> and I've known you forever as well. That's too late. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I've like, known you. I've yeah, known that's like nice, the mistress though. that you get, like the the Valentine's Day gift on February fifteenth. <laughs> right. Like I, yeah. I get it. I know yeah, where yeah, I stand. Yeah. I got you a black diamond. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why you give me a white diamond? <laughs> No, I want a black time. Um, well, I, I think our time is almost up, John. Doesn't oh, get better than that. I'm going to leave right now. <laughs> Where are you really? No, okay. Well. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to watch the rest of the show. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think it's been made very clear to me that this segment is over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> John, okay. you're the best. We love you. Yeah, we love you so much. Keep oh, it going for John show. Hodgman, everybody. <laughs> Everybody! He's the best. He's literal dream. I love him. Two Dope Queens is supported by Blue Apron. Come and knock at our door. We've been waiting for Blue Apron! The number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country that is impacting communities and households everywhere. Plus, you know where your food is actually coming from because Blue Apes has partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranches across the United States. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash queen. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash queen. All right, let me do it again. I fucked it up. I have one job. Um, all right, y'all ready for our last comic of the evening? Do you want to introduce or no? Um, yeah, let's do it together. Okay. He um, is... Okay, well, I'll start. <laughs> he is so funny. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> hysterical. Yeah. Uh, you know him from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Please give it up for John Roberts! Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Hello. How's it going? I'm John Roberts. Uh, I guess I should tell you a little about myself. Um, I'm half Irish. I'm half Italian. And that makes me gay. Uh, I play Linda on Bob's Burgers. Thank you. Thank you. I was so, when I got the job as Linda, I was so excited because I was like, I'm finally going to really get laid now. You know what I mean? And uh, that didn't happen. But um, no, because I feel like people like, like they think I'm going to turn into Linda. You know what I mean? Like when we're doing it, like I'll be you know, like, we'll be doing it. And I'll be like. Come on, fuck Linda, come on. Don't you want to fuck Linda? Like, after we come, I'll be like, all right. <laughs> fuck Linda, fuck her. Uh, uh, uh. What? So come back and fuck Linda. <laughs> no, they come back, they come back. <laughs> trying to get that residual money now yeah it's too late design within reach has it all um i just moved back from the i was in the, on the west coast for a while and i just moved back to my roots back on the east coast <laughs> Woo! no it's great i uh, i bought this really old house and i think it's haunted it's uh it's really old and uh i think it's haunted and i try to impress the ghost, you know, by like just keeping it really clean and like respecting it. <laughs> like he's like, oh, he's really keeping it clean, isn't he? <laughs> he's British. The, the ghost is British. <laughs> but, um. Oh, look, he's polishing the floors just like I used to do. <laughs> oh, John's masturbating again. <laughs> <laughs> 
so stupid. When I when I um, when I first moved in, I had like I, I learned how to ride a motorcycle and stuff, and I got like a muscle car in L.A. I like, was really douching out there for a while, and uh, I shipped it all back. So like I thought like all the neighbors were gonna think I was straight. You know what I mean? Like like really butch. You know what I mean? Like like all the girls would be like, oh my god, like who's that guy? Like who's that guy? I moved next door. It's like, but like I blew it because. One day I thought my, I have like these two, the gayest dogs in the world. <laughs> like always putting them on Instagram and stuff, but they're really gay. And um, I thought one ran away and I was just like cleaning the house and like flip flops and bikini briefs or something. And uh, I just got, I panicked and I just ran outside. I was like, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. I got like really gay. Like uh, it was like, oh, like I guess he's gay. Like the neighbor is like, ah. Oh. Just like outed myself. No, because I, I can't, sometimes I try to imagine like I could pass for straight, right, guys? A little bit. All right, everyone, like put your head down and like put it back up for a second. She's like, nah, he's gay. He's totally gay. Like, I know. I just like gaydar. He's really gay. I want to have like a really like like when I meet someone like have a, like a big gay wedding like really gay like like so gay that you could see it from space probably. <laughs> Which would be nice. It makes sense. Because, like, gay people, we don't really have angels, you know? Like, no, it's true. Like, the closest thing we have to angels are, like, lesbian astronauts. Just, like, fly, like, just, like looking over us. You know what I mean? So it would be, like, really gay. It would be, like, two unicorns as soon as you walk in. They would be, like, bending over with, like, a rainbow shooting out of their butts and stuff. And, like, we, like, we would walk in and... Like, Rosie O'Donnell would be there, like, just, like, you know, and Susie Orman, like, giving out, like, oyster shots and stuff, like, a whole, like, you know. And, like, all the tables that have, like, all, like, condoms and lube and stuff. And, like, Harvey Firestein would do, like, that thing, like, do you take John to be a little It'd be beautiful. Be beautiful. You know, I, I don't want to be, like, one of those gay people that's, like, always insulting, like, lady parts, you know? Because you do that or like around your, like your straight guy friends, they get really mad. They're like, hey, man, that's not cool. Like, I got to eat that, you know? <laughs> but... I don't know. I have this guy, we're hanging out with our families. This, you know, it's the holidays. We got to hang around our families. I got to go hang out with all my relatives from Staten Island. You know, I got this one cousin, Joey. He's like always like, John, like, how's the comedy going? He's like, maybe I could do a little comedy, right? I want to do some comedy. Like, well, how do you do it? Like, what's it like? How do you do comedy? So this would be like, this would be my cousin Joey doing stand-up comedy. Hey, how you doing, everybody? I'm Joey. How you doing? Uh... Uh, you ever feel like a dick and you don't know why, right? <laughs> all of a sudden you feel like a dick and you're like, why do I feel like a dick all of a sudden? The dick feeling. Come on, say it with me. The dick feeling. <laughs> right? Like when you're like, when you're trying on sunglasses for the first time, like, why do I feel like a dick all of a sudden, right? The dick feeling, right? <laughs> or like, or like when you get stuck on like a roller coaster, you know, you feel like a dick, right? Or like at the end of like a really good movie, like after it's over when you're like walking up the aisle. Like what, I feel like a dick, you know, I feel like a dick. <laughs> the dick feeling. Right? I was thinking, you know, it would be fun, you know, because they got all these like cameras now. It's like 1984, you know, they got cameras everywhere. And like if you drive through a light, all of a sudden you get like a picture in the mail. You know, you're like, oh, we got you, you know. But wouldn't it be fun if like... <laughs> If, like, they did, like, funny stuff, like, that happened to you and you got a picture in the mail, you know, like, if you got into a fight, right, you got, like, punched in the back of your head, like, boom, you know? <laughs> like, you get a picture like that, you know? Right? Like, you're taking a poop, like, oh, like, they get a camera in your bathroom somehow, you know? Like, oh, I just did that, you know? Oh, you know, I was reading, lots of depressing news nowadays. You know, I was reading about uh, uh, Linda Carter from Wonder Woman that played Wonder Woman has irritable bowel syndrome. No. 
That's right. You know, back in the day, you know, she would spin around and around and she would transform into Wonder Woman, right? It's beautiful. If she did that now, we'd all be covered in shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, uh, how do you know you're at a gay picnic or a gay barbecue? All the hot dogs taste like shit. Good night, everyone. I'm Joey. That's Joey. He's funnier than me, actually. Um, You guys don't really like me. You just want to see Linda, don't you? Yeah, I wrote a song about it, and it goes like this. Everybody loves Linda. Nobody loves John. The only time they ever listen is when Linda is on. People turn to Linda when they need a laugh, though. In real life, I'm just a balding homo. (laughs) Give me a chance. Give John a chance. Give me a chance to shine. I'm flying. Or was it all in my mind? Thank you, everyone. Good night. I'm John Roberts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Two dope queens. Give it up for John Roberts, everybody. You just heard John Roberts, John Hodgman, and Sonia Denise. Tito Queens is produced by Joanna Salataroff, Jim Boyant, Paula Schumann, and Rachel Neal. Our team includes Joe Plord, Matt Boynton, Ed Haber, George Wellington, Isaac Jones, and Shanoa Estrada. Our theme music was composed by Jeff Broski. Hey, hunty! And be like Mark Zuckerberg. Like us on Facebook, okay? Did you know that you can get our podcast on iTunes, Google Music Play, and now we're on Spotify? Don't forget to subscribe and comment and follow and like and all that goodness. And look, I know I'm going to sound like your naggy mom. Do the dishes. Make your bed. Get a clean wipe. Why are all these socks crunchy? <laughs> Ew. Uh, sometimes socks get crunchy just because they're old. Like That is so ignorant. That's like why you don't have kids yet is because that's your first thought of like what a mom does. It's like just handling jizz in the teen years. The point is, be sure to subscribe to our show. It really makes a dip. That's all for now, y'all. Wacky <laughs> <laughs> So there's like a lot happening. There's like like love triangles and Screech is like super into Lisa Turtle. <sighs> that I sounds mean, really cool. Zach and Kelly. I mean, well, have you seen from Justin and Kelly with love, the American Idol movie where they go on a resort? Hello? Yeah, I want to uh, dial into a conference call with Mark Paul Gossler and <laughs> Tiffany Thiessen. You want to um, dial into it? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to where you need to dial into that? I'm talking to my assistant because how dare oh. you compare fucking Justin and Kelly to Zach Morris and Kelly Kapowski? How dare you make that comparison? I mean, the show sounds good, to be honest. It sounds pretty tight. Hey, guys. Guess what? I am going to be a part of RuPaul's Drag Con, babies. That's right. If you're in the L.A. area, I will be there April 29th and 30th. Please go to RuPaul'sDragCon.com for info to look at a cute picture of me and also to buy tickets. I'll be doing panel, taking pictures, and signing my book that you already bought. And if you already bought it, just buy it again because mama needs some new pants. 